are you? It's Josh here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build these beautiful B&M style catwalks for your steel coasters. So that means that you can use these for the corkscrew coaster, the multi-launch coaster, any of these coasters right here. Especially the flawless coaster, which is the coaster we're going to be using today. I'll be showing you two different examples of how you can use these right here. One with the chain lift and one with a block brake going right here or one I guess with a brake run at the end if you want to call it that. Well, first we're going to start out with this one over here which has has the lovely chain lift. But before we get into the catwalks right here, I should probably show you what angle we're doing with all these chain lifts. So if I just grab our flawless coaster, which by the way, we're going to be using here, although you can use this with any steel coaster, which is an inverted, I guess. Basically, what we want to do is just place down our station right here. And then what I just did right here was basically just place down one like that. Then we go into here. And then what I've done, long story short, is just place this in like so on a 15 degree angle. Just brought that up like that with a chain lift on it. And then I've just brought this going all the way up to, uh, you know, wherever you want to bring your chain lift up to. But now we've got that out of the way, let's actually get on to building this catwalk right here. So first of all, let's start out with the actual place that we walk right here. So we just want to go into our primitives and scroll all the way along, very, very far way along until we find this right here. Make sure we've got precision build mode and we're just going to place this down anywhere nearby so that we can actually start to place this in. What I recommend doing is actually centering this on the actual coaster right here and placing this on the edge of a square like this if that makes sense and then we just want to lower this by a quarter this may vary depending on what coaster you're actually doing this for right here but if you're using a flawless coast these are the measurements that i'm going to use right here so then what we're going to do is just on default snapping we're just going to bring this two across like so so like that there you go and then we can just place in these coming a little bit like this now what i recommend doing is just bring this about to here it's a bit hard to really judge and work out you know there's no magic number to you know say go there or go here or whatever but just around this sort of area i feel like this is a good point to mention that of course you do not need to copy these colors right here for your build right here i'm going to be using this orange right here if you'd like to use it although i'm not going to pop it up on the screen or anything like that with you know the color wheel down in the bottom right because there's literally no point so now we've got our platforming right here i reckon we're getting some ladders now these ladders kind of act as our steps right here because it's kind of hard to do actual proper steps without you know doing some really hard stuff so what we're going to do is in other we're going to find our ladders right here there we are and we're just going to place these on precision build mode again so that we can place these in properly we want these to be, of course, 30 degrees because we put this to 15 degrees, which doubled is 30 degrees. I don't know why it's doubled, but, you know, uh, we just want to rotate that round like so until we've got it there. And then on a quarter snapping, we'll bring that across and bring it around. And basically what we now want to do is just line this up with the edge right here, as you can see. This is another stylistic choice, but I'm going to paint mine not orange like this, but I'm going to paint it gray because for some reason, normally the steps are gray, but the actual flat bits aren't. I don't know. But, you know, if you feel if you want to, uh, feel free to paint paint everything orange instead of having the gray steps. We're going to rotate these round on 45 degrees, just completely flip them around like so. And then on no snapping, we're just going to bring these up until about this here. If you can see, these little bits are about to stick through. Once they stop sticking through, we're just going to place that in right there. And now what we can do is bring those going all the way up until the end of our chain lift. So if we come over here and go into our roofs and ceilings, we can get this ceiling rod pole thingy dingy right here. Yes, I'm sure that's the official word for it, thingy dingy, but we're just going to place this in on precision build mode and move this around around on a quarter snapping. Now we want to place this just slightly lower down like this and then we're just going to go back onto default and bring this two across like so and just carry that on going like that. Now because this switch is right here we want to have a diagonal piece so we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to get our flat fence done first. So now we've placed in all our vertical poles it's time to go horizontal so we're just going to go onto half snapping rotate this round and we're going to place these going in all along like so and on a quarter snapping bring this down down and across just all the way again and like magic we've got it all sorted it out there now. What I've also done right here is added this bit of a cover right here because obviously this doesn't look great. So it's very simple how we do that. We're just going to come in right here, go into roofs and ceilings again, and we're just going to grab our roof trim. On no snapping and on 45 degree right here, we can just bring this round by 90 degrees like so. And we just want to line this up so that this is about in the middle of these poles. It's a bit hard to really show this right here, you know, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to bring this into like the middle right here. And then we just want to bring this down so that it's just slightly lower than the ceiling rod poles there we go line everything up on this side right here of course and then we want to place in another one by coming back into this right here by holding shift and clicking on eyedropper and we just want to set our custom stamp to 0.1 bring that up and then we can bring those going all the way along so that gives us a bit of a bump right here which most catwalks actually do have for some reason i'm not sure why they have that but you know it's on there and now we can actually bring them up the sides so uh this is pretty basic to be honest we just want to rotate this round by 30 degrees right here just as we've done before and we just want to line this up on the corner 
on it now. You can do that by just going on default snapping and rotating around like I've just done there. But either or, you know, you just need to line it up like so and then bring this on again on 0.1. And we can just connect that up like that and bring that going all the way up. See, this looks really complicated, but when you actually get to it, it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's just a lot of doing, you know, very the same thing over and over, I guess. Now, what we're going to do is just bring this top pole right here out as much as we want here, just like that. I'm just going to bring it out to there for now because what we want to do is actually work out where this needs to connect in. So you guessed it, we're going to rotate this round by 30 degrees and we're just going to line this up right here. So we're going to come on here and we just want to uh, actually bring this down as much as possible until it starts to show through there. So about there, we can use the top one a bit better there. And then we can just bring this down until it actually lines up like so. We can now delete both of these right here and actually just line these up. So connect them in with no snapping until they line up like that. And we want to do the exact same for both of these two down here as well. And now for this fence up here, this is pretty self-explanatory. We just want to place these on custom snapping too. We're just going to place these going all the way up our chain lift right here. And then we want to do the horizontal uh, poles just as we did down here by rotating them around by 45 degrees. So I'm going to get that done. And there we go. Now we've got our fence all in. That's almost everything done right here. The one thing that we are missing is, well, a way to hold this up because right now this is magically floating, which normally I don't really like it when my catwalks are floating. It's not quite very realistic, is it? <laughs> anyway, although I'm not going to show you how to actually do these supports right here in today's video, we will show you how to connect up these because obviously, you know, catwalks kind of need connecting up in a catwalk tutorial. <laughs> now, with where we want to actually connect these in, it's completely up to you, but I'm just going to pick a random point like right here. We're just going to get a primitive cuboid pole, rotate this round by 90 degrees on 45 degrees, snapping like that. And we just want to bring this up so it's basically just connecting in like so. And then we've got our pole right here. So next, what we're going to do is actually add this one down here. So we're just going to go on a quarter snapping, actually, just so we can line this up like so. And then we're just going to go on no snapping so we can bring this up until it's basically just slightly poking through the spine right here. This means that now, once we actually want to connect this up, it makes it a little bit easier. So we just set it to 11.25 degrees and we just want to rotate it around like that and bring this in like so. I actually did the wrong amount there. It's actually 45 degrees, I think, right here. And we just want to place that in like so. Now, again, this is kind of up to you and it kind of depends on what roller coaster you're actually doing right here, what type, but I'm going to separate mine all by five right here. So if we go on to custom snapping, for example, I just separated these by a five each like so, although feel free to do it six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to go over how to do all of these right here because it's literally just the exact same thing again, although for these ones right here that are actually on an incline, just keep in mind that we want to actually keep it the same sort of rotation as everything else right here, so it makes sense, you know. But except from that, that's literally all of the catwalks sort it out for our chain lift right here. Pretty cool, hey? So now we can head over to our break run right here instead. Now to just give you an example of how I've actually done this right here, if I just place my station in and just go backwards, I think if I remember rightly off the top of my head, we've got one piece like so, and then I've just come into here and brought this out by one, two on a 10 snapping right here, and then just brought this up on five degree snapping so that we've got a 10 degree sort of angle right here, and we've just brought this up right like that. Not like that, actually. I've just done that with chain lift. <laughs> we just want to bring that up like that and then with block breaks just as long as you want right here But of course just like this one over here We're actually going to build this just on the opposite side right here So no worries about that But basically what we just want to do right here is just copy this onto the other side If you've got a four seat across or if you've only got a two seat across Then well you only really need one actual catwalk right here again as I said before So just as before what we're going to do is start out by scrolling all the way along Until we find this flat piece right here and we're just going to place this in making sure that we've got precision build mode enabled yes and then we can just bring this down by a quarter and over by well if we bring this into the middle we want to just bring this over by one two over to here and then just line everything up like that and something important to mention right here is that when you actually start curving you need to actually start curving on this path right here something that i got very wrong and something that confused me quite a lot right here is that i ended up having it actually over here before it started curving which meant that this didn't line up properly and it was a massive problem so make sure that you've got this start and stopping the actual curve at the right place. So what I actually did right here to kind of line everything up is we're just going to go into here. I'm going to set my custom snapping to 10 and we're going to bring this up by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, just as you can see right here from this little green thing. Except from what we are going to do is just bring this over by a half like so and place that in right there. Now this is going to be our guide that we're going to rotate around everything in just a little bit. But before we do that, what's actually easier to do right here is just do our fence first because then we can just 
just copy everything way easier. And now what we can actually do is rotate everything around right here. So what we want to do is just grab this right here. And we're just going to start out by actually getting this flat bit right here. We're not going to worry about curving it right now. So we're going to come into here and we're going to come all the way up. Hold shift and middle mouse click on this little finger that we've got all the way up here. 50 up. And then we're going to set our rotation to just custom snapping 10. And we can just literally rotate it around by one like so. That'll bring it over there. We can do the exact same thing for this one right here. And I think you can probably get the gist right here. We just want to rotate everything around by just one right like so. Just so we get everything rotated around by 10 degrees. And we can get this flat thing going all the way up here. And there we go. We've got our catwalk piece right here. Which we can literally just bring up all the way to the end of our block break run right here. And after a million years later, we've actually gotten all of that in right here. And now it's time to do our curve. Now because this is 10 degrees right here, we actually want to do this at 2.5 degrees. So we're just going to bring that in right here. Bring this. And we're just going to go on to custom stopping 2.5 degrees rotation. And we're just going to bring one, two, three of those in like so. And then you guessed it. We want to copy of them and add an extra one right here. Not exactly very surprising, is it? You know, I mean, it's pretty obvious. And to actually fill in these gaps right here, we just want to scroll along until we find these bars. And on a half snapping and just rotating these around by 45 degrees, we just want to add one on, on either side like so for each of these pieces right here, which basically just bridges that gap for us and makes everything nice and, you know, fluid. Keep in mind that you may not have to fill in these gaps. It depends on actually the size of your curve. If you've got a slightly smaller curve right here, then you'll not have that problem really, will you? And then for our fence running all the way alongside right here, we just want to grab this pole right here and we just want to rotate this round by 2.5 degrees. Add two of those in like so. For these along here, you guessed it, we're going to rotate these round by 2.5 degrees. You, you know, it's, it's really surprising. <laughs> and once we've done both of those right here, we're obviously going to have a bit of a gap, as you can see. So all we need to do is use these roof chimps right here, bring these across on a quarter snapping and just basically rotate these around or whatever we need to do right here and just fill in all of these gaps just as you can see me doing right here. And now here's for the difficult part because we've actually got to connect all of these fences up right here. Well, to be honest, it's not actually really that difficult, but all we want to do is just bring this pole like so, bring this up by a half and we just want to place in that like that. And we just want to do this by bringing this down by a quarter and a quarter like that. And then we can just add these onto the other two as well. For this last one right here, we can't actually use this angle because it's kind of the wrong angle right here. So what I recommend doing is actually just placing in an extra one of these poles right here, even though we're not really going to use it. We're just going to add in an extra one of these poles on 2.5 degrees, just as kind of like a guiding pole that we can use. And then you can just rotate around that like so, and it's quite easy. Something to note on this one though, is that I'm actually just going to go on no snapping and just bring this up to this edge right here, because then now the next step is that we actually want to connect everything up on no snapping, because of course there is gap. So let's go on to no snapping, and we're just going to connect all of these fences up like so, pretty simple. And now all that's done, we've got one last thing to do, which is it actually the connectors so that this isn't floating. And I'm going to quickly skim over this because we did show it over here, but all we want to do is just go into here, bring in a pole, and we just want to rotate this round. So bring our pole in, do this, do, 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 rotate this round, and just lower this down like so. Add another pole halfway through the spine, just kind of popping through a tiny little bit, and then we can just connect these up using 11.25 degrees. I think it's actually 45 degrees if I remember right here even. And we just want to connect that all in like so. And after a quick little paint right here, that's literally everything I need to show you guys. I hope this video has been really helpful. I personally really love these styles right here. I'm quite happy with the designs. So yeah, if this tutorial's actually been helpful and you decide to use these in your own park, then, you know, make sure to leave a like on the video. It'd be very much appreciated. Here's all the lovely channel members on the screen. Thank you all so much for supporting me. It's really much appreciated. If you'd like to become a member yourself, it's only 99p or $1.30 a month for the very cheapest option and you get early access to videos, early access to showcase your parks theme, sneak peeks, exclusive videos, and so much more. So consider checking that out if you'd like to support me a little bit further while getting some really cool perks. If this video hits 100 likes, I will do another tutorial showing you how to actually do the top of the chain lift right here, because obviously that's got a bit of a different sort of catwalk right here normally. So hit that like button if you'd like to see that, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified whenever I next upload. And except from that guys, I hope you'll have an absolutely lovely, lovely day, and I'll see you all in another one. Goodbye!